Hey everybody, this is Frank, your all-knowing gamer, coming at you with another audio commentary. We've got some more League of Legends for you today. Today we're going to be looking at another Dan Din game. Uh, he uploaded it to the CLG website, so everybody take your time to thank him for that. And it's going to be Epic Gaming versus a new team, Team Anguish, uh, coming in. So uh, we've got Dan Din's team here, uh, Epic, and the Team Anguish was 31st seed, and Epic Gaming was second seed so we're gonna have to see how this one plays out anguish is a new team but um before i get into any of the stats and anything that's going on here the team comp or anything like that i do want to introduce you to my co-caster today um silver dirge uh welcome to the uh to the frank commentary here thank you very much it's an honor to be here so uh let's see synchronizing it i'm about 55 seconds in all right let me and... speed up and you go ahead <laughs> and uh right now we're looking at Clairvoyance going down on Epic's side at blue. Looks like they're trying to see if uh, just see if there will be any level one engages. Uh, Fierce Dizzle is running Skarner on Team Anguish, and Riven looks. Uh, Westrace is running Riven for the jungle, and uh, minute twenty seconds in, doesn't look like there's going to be any level one fight. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I don't think Team Anguish is gonna go for anything too ballsy like that. Um, of course, being a new team, I really, really yeah, doubt that they're gonna awesome. step up to Team Epic in their in the level one jungle fight. It's uh, definitely not something you want to do against a team uh, w that has West Rice in the jungle. Definitely don't want to mess around with that. So yeah, um, Skarner actually has been noted by the odd one. Um, who is a, a very, very high-level jungler as one of the top jungles in the game right now. And uh, I don't know, what are your thoughts on that, Silver Dirge? Uh, I, I feel that is, uh, I don't know, I believe it's a hit or miss. Uh, I could definitely see it being reliant on runes, reliant on getting a good leash, and also making sure you know how Skarner functions. Uh, he's got good DPS, and he's got the armor resist and uh, magic resist to be in the jungle for extended periods of time without dying, but uh, I'm not quite sure how that'll work out in the future. Yeah, he's. Uh, I, I definitely don't see him too frequently in my my ELO my uh, ranked games, and but of course I am playing out of like 1500, so maybe he's only used very useful at very very top level games. Um, so right. we've so we've got a, uh, a a Soraka with a vein versus a Caitlyn with a Tarek, which has been noted as one of the stronger combinations. Uh, who do you think is going to come out ahead on that one? Quite honestly, uh, Dan Din and Nat Nien just have so much more experience working together as a team. Uh, I honestly think that despite Tarek Caitlyn being such a strong combination, they both have hard seeds. Both have hard CC. Caitlyn has her amazing range. Uh, Tarek following up with his dazzle. I believe the experience between Dan Din and his teammate will help them pull ahead. Yeah, I think that uh, that kind of one-trick pony that that combination has isn't going to be strong enough to mess around with the uh, the strong combination in Epic Gaming down at bottom. Um, just taking a look at mid lane here, uh, we haven't gotten too far into the CSing quite yet, but um, Kennen versus Morgana, that's a pretty that's a pretty balanced trade-off. I don't think that anyone's necessarily going to have too strong of an advantage in that. Um, Morgana, of course, with that shield being able to dodge um, Kennen's uh, range attacks there, but with the ability with both of them having skill shot abilities that can be blocked by minions, we might see a oh, lot. Oh, sorry to interrupt, but yep, I go feel ahead. there's a gank going up at top. Skarner walking in on Yorick, who's down to about half health and now burned his flash. So Skarner's retreating for now. And, uh, I guess Despair and, uh, hoi 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 <laughs> are happily duking it out. Half health, uh... Yorick's got to be wary in case if Skarner comes back. He hasn't officially left. Oh, there's the clairvoyance, so Skarner's gone. He can safely lane, but if he gets ganked a second time, I believe that could be a first blood right there. Yeah, definitely, and you can see the clairvoyance going down there to uh, their team. Definitely communicating here, making sure that uh, Yorick isn't going down anytime soon. Um, so that's going to be definitely the lane to watch for right now, I think. Uh, like I was saying, middle lane, t just far too balanced out. And uh, just wait for Yorick to be forced back, essentially, to get that ward. There he is again, actually. Skarner coming in for a gank here. It looks like Lee Sin with the Ignite jumping all over him. He gets the uh, the Resonating Strike and the kickoff. But it looks like, though, Yorick is going to survive that one. And there he is being forced back, but decides to stick around. So I don't know how well this is going to play out for him. Gutsy, and considering this is off lol replay, so the health bar may or may not be accurate. Uh, I'm reading 399 out of 752. 
So uh, if he's it really is at half health, uh, it's questionable to stay there. Yeah, um, I, I definitely think he's a little bit lower than that because <laughs> I think I was watching him and he stayed at 399 that entire time, even with the ignite on him and whatnot. So um, I definitely think that there's something going on with the replay viewer, but that's fine. We take what we can get as casters and uh, that's 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 okay. Um, right. Down at bottom lane here, just taking a look at the CS, it looks like Dan Din has taken a significant advantage down there as well. Right, and again, prime example of the fact he's so comfortable in his role and just flexible with what he needs to do. Uh, I, that advantage, that tiny little advantage over Caitlyn, well, I wouldn't say tiny anymore, actually. That is 13 CS uh, above Caitlyn, which, uh, which I believe will hurt in the long run. Oh, definitely. It's. I think uh, as soon as actually it looks like that we've got a stun on uh, Dandin, but Dandin's going to turn things around here, and he's going to go after the Caitlyn here, getting one shot off. Uh, got that single ring on there. Now opts to switch to Tarek, which I don't think is the best play. Um, uh, Tarek having that heal, which can heal himself as well. You don't want to spread out the damage. You want to make sure you pick one target when you're up against the Tarek in lane there. And uh, so now uh, Caitlyn down to half health and no mana. We're going to see. Um, potentially in the next couple heals from the Soraka if that gets turned around and uh, some action going on at top as well. Yeah. Westry's hanging around there at the bottom tower. There'll be a interesting angle to gank from if he decides to do so. Yeah, I think he's just waiting for his team to, to clear out those minions. And I, you can see there, uh, Dandin's going to push in a little bit. No, actually, he's, gonna, he's just going to act like everything's normal. And... Uh, Soraka trying to bait there. No ward for the bottom lane on the enemy team, though. It looks like Westrice is going to jump in here, but a nice flash getting away there from uh, from the Riven. Oh, just enough damage. With the red buff ticking away, is going to pick up that Caitlyn. Looking up in mid, we've got Kennen at 57 CS and Morgana at 33. I'm actually rather impressed by this. Uh, Morgana has her small AoE ability there, and not really picking up as much CS in comparison to her opponent here. Yeah, that's, uh, I think it's it's pretty typical for, actually, we've got Kennen going to move to red, but um, hopefully nothing happens here so I can finish this thought, but um, it's pretty typical for Morgana to struggle a little bit in the early game, but not as much as we're seeing here. Um, the, that deficit is just massive, and Morgana is going to go back now, so hopefully she'll get some items that are that'll allow her to CS a little bit better when she returns. Uh, York and Lee Sin just hanging out at top, trading blows. Uh, I'm going to assume fairly evenly, but LOL Replay has not quite updated their health bars yet, so we have no idea where they're sitting at. Uh, Lee Sin backing up there from those ghouls that uh, York can just pump out non-stop, especially with the... He's got a tier of the Goddess now, so he can just keep spamming, spamming the ghouls, forcing Lee Sin away, and widening that CS gap, which... If you look overall, Epic has pulled ahead significantly. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's definitely what sets apart a, uh, a, a like a pro, like a, an established pro team, and even a like a newer pro team. Like like we said, this is being played at an MLG qualifier online, and uh, you know, to even to even apply for that kind of uh, tournament, you you should have at least the ability to CS. And it looks like though uh, some action in mid, but no. Um, yeah, so just being able to CS is one of the key fundamentals that's going to set apart a really good team from, um, you know, a not-so-great team. Right. Looks like uh, Skarner is just strolling around here. Where do you believe he uh, he could be heading? Maybe checking on Blue or coming around to gank Kennen wherever he could be if he figures out they're at the tower? Well, it looks like Lee Sin's actually following him down right now, so they're kind of in the darkness, but... Um, knowing that Riven has just gone through a nice jungle clear. She's got her blue buff on her, um, which she can actually take for those cooldowns because Kennen, of course, doesn't need it, and uh, neither does she, both of them not using mana. But um, they could be anywhere right now. It looks like Lee Sin has headed back top, so Skarner uh, most likely has gone back at this point. But uh, actually, it looks like more action going on mid right now, uh, just poking uh, back and forth here. Oh, Skarner coming up in top. Grabbing Yorick with an ult, and Yorick's got the ignite on him, flashing away, and falls. Down he goes. There, there's a scary gank there. The ward in River just expired right when Yorick walked through the bush, so I just hope it was a, a lapse in judgment of not being able to see his opponent. Oh, and Tarek 
flying in bottom. You managed to catch it. Yes, um, actually, I just got uh, I just got the message. I was checking out top and seeing Kenny move up there, but I didn't I didn't catch the action that happened down there. Unfortunately, I think we were both drawn to the fact that Yorick died. Um, Ten minutes in and only three kills in. It's very rare that, that we're going to see a kill, but no, um, Dan Din, of course, pulling out the action and uh, picking up yet another kill down at bottom. And even setting himself even farther ahead in that CS 75-47 to 47 against that Caitlyn, right. and now Dragon Attempt as well. Looks like uh, they've been CV'd, and Morgana puts down her ult, Caitlyn. Oh, Caitlyn deciding to pull out away from Vayne as soon as she's got her ult up, and Skarner coming in out of nowhere to uh, chase down Dan Din as he heads towards the tower here. Getting caught by Morgana. Ignite going down and Skarner. Man, oh no, Morgana picking up the kill. Yeah, I think uh, it was just that last tick of the Ignite there that picked that one up, but Dan Din did a really good job there of uh, using his E ability and pushing the Skarner away. And I don't know if you noticed there, actually Skarner came in and smited the dragon but smite it too early. So on a dragon steal, typically what you, yeah, what what usually will happen is um, the team who's doing battle, and we've we've got top lane down as well from the Kennen. But usually what'll happen is if you rush into a team that's doing dragon, what'll end up happening is you'll scare them, and they they will smite early. But no, Skarner jumps in and jumps the gun, and you can see where the uh, the lack of uh, experience is is really starting to show here. Um, action going down mid as well. Kenan, it looks like, trying to get his ultimate off there, but not getting anything done with it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, so, um, it looks like, uh, Riven's just chilling out in the bush there, just waiting for her time to leap. I don't think she's gonna... I, don't, I really don't think she's going to be able to accomplish anything, though, with uh, the two solo characters in mid lane there. A little bit too scary to push out into that and uh, give Riven the opportunity to gang. Right, Westry's his experience with jungling, with Riven, uh, has proven, I believe, time and time again, he knows what he's doing. And creeping up on Skarner there, taking tower hits and backing up safely away. Uh, Lol Replay's not updating his health, but by far I'm going to... Assume he's, yep, retreating back in the jungle. It's not quite safe to push out in the lane just yet. Uh, Westry's doing a great job keeping this jungle clear, spick and span. Mm -hmm. That's definitely one of the things you you, you want to notice about the uh, the top level junglers is how uh, how well they're keeping their jungle down as well as being aggressive and ganking. It looks like actually Tarek coming towards mid here, trying to duke it out with this cannon, but the cannon's obviously f way more. Uh, way more damage inducing than the, this Tarek and uh, the Tarek is going to get shielded by the Morgana and be able to get away there. Right. Uh, Yorick free farming top. So what do you, what are your thoughts on Yorick? What, what happens when he's fully farmed? <laughs> um, actually, to be honest with you, I think Yorick tends to... Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to relate uh, Yorick to a Kale. He's got that that ultimate that can be v like just super game changing, and I think that he's really really good in the laning phase. But I think that he definitely falls off in the late game, from my experience, anyways. Um, a lot of people have a lot of different takes on Yorick. I think people, I don't know. It's it's just it's a hard thing to call. That's all I'm gonna say. It's really difficult to call a Yorick. Right. It's like a. Skarner is waiting in the bush, similar to what Westrace was doing on Riven earlier, and deciding to back off, uh, heading towards top, where Lee Sin, uh, while you were speaking earlier, just cut across mid, heading straight towards top, and York backing up here to go buy more items. Mm -hmm. Um, and we can see, actually, if we take uh, just another look, actually, we've got uh, we've got Bottom pushing in here. It looks like Nat Nguyen is uh, going to be pushing down here. Hopefully I pronounced that properly. Uh, pushing down on the turret here, getting some damage done, but that's not going to fall quite yet. But we've got more action going in here. It looks like Morgana in the midst of Morgana and Skarner versus Kennen. It looks like Morgana's gone down. It looks like Kennen's going to do more damage to Skarner. Skarner's definitely not going to come ahead on this one. So Kennen doing an absolutely perfect job there of taking on that 2v1 and uh, I have to say it's definitely due to the farm which is coming very close to double what Morgana's is right now. Right, Dandin waiting in the bush there. They know they had a ward down which just expired. CV going down, they see Caitlyn. Caitlyn not gonna face check. Wise idea, pulling away from there, getting a, a whiff of the danger that she's in. 
Yeah, I definitely think that's one thing they've got going for them is uh, the fact that they're at least not face checking into bushes with uh, veins and, and sorakas and rivens in them. That's definitely a good call. But we've got middle turret down, which is going to open up the map for Epic Gaming. They're going to have a lot more map presence. Not that they didn't have it already. And we've got a huge amount of action going on here. And it looks like... Uh, the Morgana is going to fall again, and it looks like Morgana is definitely the one who's having the most trouble, um, both in CS and just dying so frequently. Um, looks like Riven, though, is going to go in the background here, take a lot of turret shots, but uh, Lee Sin is going to go down here. Nice shield from the Riven. Wow! Very oh. clutch heal by Nat Nien there. Just a huge, just well, just super well played by, I, I would say, I would put that one on West Rice there. Just really well played, knowing how much punishment his character can take. Right. Just uh, being able to place himself where he needs to be with Riven. Riven is one of those characters that it needs to just sneak up on you, dish out damage, and then get out as fast as she can. She's got a closer, she's got damage healing, she's got that shield, which can keep her in fights longer, but the Unfortunately, the one thing that most inexperienced players, or at least lower level ELOs, don't know about Riven is they just don't know when to quit. <laughs> they just keep walking in there, and uh, a prime example of having experience that Epic is showing in this game is knowing what their champion can and cannot take. Absolutely, and uh, you could see there uh, Tarek as well um, going down there to Ward uh, Ward Baron. I think they they know that's a threat, even though it's only um, I don't know how accurate the the lol replay timer is, but mine's saying sixteen thirty. So um, right, it uh it tends to be fairly accurate, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. Unfortunately, but uh on the other hand, professional. Games uh, recently, more recently, have had very early Baron, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if we have a pre twenty minute Baron in this game. Absolutely, and you can see, uh, you can tell that that's definitely an option by uh, Tarix, um preempting that. And, whoa, we've got a huge fight in the middle here, massive ultimate from Kennen, although he does go down, and Yorick's in some trouble here as well. <laughs> Soraka still waltzing around, taking the bullet there for Caitlyn's ace in the hole. And, oh, Dan Din managing to push Lee Sin into the wall, and chasing down after Morgana, uh, putting up a shield preemptively, flashing out of there just in time, and uh, fair exchange, one for one, but uh, I strongly believe taking down Lee Sin was a great boon for Epic Gaming just because he's got the mobility to shut down the people in the back that need to stay back, such as, say, Soraka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely don't want your Soraka getting kicked in the face by a Lee Sin from over a wall or something like that. Always a bad thing. And actually, I just want to point out, I know I, I've mentioned it so many times this game, but I want to point out how huge the gap is between CSs right now. If you want to just crack that open, they are Epic Gaming is so far ahead in CS at the 18 minute mark. Not a single character on uh, on Anguish's team has uh, penetrated the 100 uh, CS mark. Right, and uh, even Soraka pulling ahead of Tarek there, which, uh, as rise from the European support AD carry uh, meta game that transferred over to the NA servers, it's a uh, Picking up a little bit of CS there on Nat Nien, not a bad thing, not too awesome either. And uh, some action going down bottom, but it doesn't look like anyone's going to engage. Uh, Lee Sin knows there's a tower right there, as does Tarek. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think they're definitely going to be hesitant to push in here, although it is a pretty big creep wave. Yeah, they're just going to back off. Uh, I don't think they had the, the right potential to push, right. and not, not to mention mid and top tower doesn't look too good. Yeah, Kennen and Yorick... Uh, Showing up against Morgana and Skarner, they've uh, they've pressured their inhibitor tower towers, and they can't leave that alone. While Caitlyn would like to push in and farm up bottom a little bit more, I I don't believe that's a wise idea for her right now. I really think she should try to just back up, stay defensive instead of pu pushing out right now. They're almost about to lose their inhibitors. Not a good idea. Yeah, I think. Um 
just defending against this vein is probably all she can do right now. Even though she's double buffed, she's not going to be able to push out on them. Um, although we've got uh, Skarner coming in here with a spell shield, and Morgana Riven revealing herself and just smashing down that Skarner. Um, and this Morgana is going to get killed before the ultimate even goes off. And uh, all these players just going in like a factory line, getting picked off one at a time, not grouping up like they should. And uh, all the while, Vayne still just winning bottom lane here. Dan Din smashing down on this Caitlyn and still being able to do enough damage to this turret. And it's probably going to fall as well as the uh, middle and top turrets. All right, we've got uh, Caitlyn at 98 CS to Dan Din's 139. He's already carrying a Bloodthirster, so he's not worried at all about losing health. Yeah, I don't think... Uh... I don't think Danden's uh, too worried about this battle right now. Um, I think Caitlyn's real, her real strength is in team fights, and I think Vayne's real strength is um, everything else. And it looks like, yeah, you can see here, just getting rolled over. As soon as another character steps in there, uh, Vayne is just able to just destroy that. Skarner goes down as well, and just all over the map, nothing going right for Anguish, and Lee Sin falls yet again, and bottom lane and top lane are just both going to get pushed down here, and we have yet to see an inhibitor go down, but that's going to happen, and I feel the next three minutes or so. Right, Winter Wings, I believe, is out of position, just hanging out middle tower instead of uh, sticking with the team. The Team Anguish right now really needs to pull it together, they have to stay as a team. Being extended, walking in one at a time, that's essentially handing epic a win on a silver platter if they keep that up yeah and, uh, for sure bottom inner turret falling as well yeah they're uh this map control that they have right now even though there's no inhibitor down or no inhibitor exposed um so they don't they don't necessarily have to defend but i think with all three lanes pushed all three inhibitors just one turret away you saw the end you saw epic gaming go to heal that's typically uh, an indicator that they're going to line up for baron soon um just taking a look to see if they've got many wards you do see that soraka has some wards as well as yorick so they're definitely going to ward up and find and uh, just position those in such a way that they can get baron freely without having to worry about the enemy team coming in all right, looks like they're trying to set up to steal blue, potentially, and... Oh, Yorick teleporting in too late to take blue, but they're rushing in on Skarner uh, and Morgana. Morgana flashing up over the wall along with Skarner and Riven picking up both kills with her ultimate. And Tarek running in way too late and out of position. Uh, again, they're just running in one at a time, and if they're together, they're not placing themselves where they need to be. And that is a surrender vote. And that is game. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that was a little crazy. I think to sum things up, uh, it really was just domination on all sides of the field. The CS, I think, was what set them behind so, so much. But uh, either way, um, until next time, guys, uh, this was Silver Dirge and Frank. Silver Dirge, I don't know if you want to plug yourself. Uh, if, you, if you want to, go ahead. Well, uh, new caster here. Um, I do have a stream up, but... It is, uh, it's yet to be t determined where my channel will be because I need to fix my computer. But uh, stay tuned, um, and you'll see me in the future. All right. It was excellent casting with you, Silver Dirge. So for now, until next time, guys, hope you enjoyed. Frank, your online gamer, and Silver Dirge signing off. Awesome. Sweet. Okay, well.